Hi, this is Benila. I make videos based on engineering concepts. If you are into this, consider subscribing. In this video, we are going to see about single phase, half wave and control rectifier. We know that the rectifier is a circuit which converts AC signal to DC signal. First, let's see what is an AC. In AC, current periodically reverses its direction. The usual waveform of an alternating current in most electric power circuits is sine wave. Look at this waveform. In this, the magnitude of the current is periodically oscillating between positive and negative value. The sine wave is not the only waveform of an AC signal. AC waveform can be a triangular wave or a square wave or any wave whose magnitude oscillates periodically between positive and negative value. In AC, the voltage will also have its magnitude varying periodically between positive and negative. In DC, the current will be unidirectional. That means the magnitude of the current will be either in positive or in negative. It can be constant magnitude or a variable magnitude or pulsating DC. Now let's consider sinusoidal AC. If we remove the current flowing in the negative direction, then the waveform will be something like this. Now we got the pulsating DC waveform. From this, we can understand that if we block the current that flows in the opposite direction, then we can get DC from the AC supply. We also know that diode will allow the current to flow through it in only one direction. Therefore, the half-way rectifier circuit will be like this. Here, diode acts like a switch, allowing the current in one direction and blocking the opposite direction current. Yes, you heard it right. I said diode acts as a switch. Now, you might ask, why don't we use switch instead of diode? Well, I will explain why switch is not a good alternative for diode in this case. First, let's replace diode with a switch. Now, we have to design this switch in such that it closes during the positive half cycle and opens during the negative half cycle. For that, let's see what is a cycle. The cycle is a one complete waveform. So, in this, this is the first cycle, this is the second cycle, and this is the third cycle. We also know that frequency is the number of cycles in one second. Do you know different countries use different frequencies? Yes, the countries like India, China, Russia, Japan, Indonesia, Australia, South Africa uses 50 Hz frequency while other countries like Canada, United States, Mexico, Brazil, and South Korea use a 60 Hz frequency. There are approximately 40 countries that use 60 Hz, while the rest typically runs on 50 Hz. That means in one second, we'll have 50 or 60 cycles, depending on which country we are from, which also means the single cycle is repeated continuously for 50 times in one second. Now let's come back to our circuit. We have to design this switch in such a way that it operates very fastly. I mean it has to open and close for nearly 50 times in one second. Do you think this is practically possible? Come on, let's face it. I can't even blink my eyes in this short time. That is why I said here, switch is not a good alternative for diode. Now, let's see how the single phase, half wave, uncontrolled rectifier work. First, let's see few key points about the diode. The diode has two terminals, anode and cathode. The barrier voltage of diode is 0.7 volt. That means the diode allows the current to flow through it only if the supply voltage is greater than 0.7 volt. For an ideal diode, the barrier voltage is considered to be zero. Therefore, it is considered to allow the current to flow through it if the input voltage is greater than zero volt. To make the analysis easy, we are considering the diode in the rectifier as ideal diode. Here, if the input voltage is greater than zero volt, then the diode acts as a short circuit. And if the input voltage is less than zero volt, then the diode acts as an open circuit. 
to know more about the diode check my video on how does diode work i will post the link to the video in the description box below now let's see the input and output waveform first let's consider the input from 0 to pi here the input voltage vs is greater than 0 therefore the diode acts as a short circuit and the current i flows through it here the load is connected parallel to the supply voltage we know that in a parallel circuit the voltage remains the same therefore the load voltage will be same as the supply voltage now let's consider the input from pi to 2 pi here the input voltage is less than zero therefore the diode acts as a open circuit and no current flows through it so the voltage drop across the load resistance is zero therefore there is no load voltage from pi to 2 pi now let's consider the input from 2 pi to 3 pi here the input voltage is greater than zero therefore the diode acts as a short circuit so the load voltage will be same as that of supply voltage considering the input from 3 pi to 4 pi here the input voltage is less than zero therefore diode acts as a open circuit so there is no load voltage from 3 pi to 4 pi now let's consider the input from 4 pi to 5 pi here the input voltage is greater than zero therefore the diode acts as a short circuit so the load voltage will be same as that of supply voltage considering the input from 5 pi to 6 pi here the input voltage is less than zero therefore diode acts as a open circuit so there is no voltage from 5 pi to 6 pi we know that the supply voltage waveform and the load voltage waveform now let's see the current waveform during the positive half cycle the diode acts as a short circuit and the current i flows through it we know that the current i is equal to the supply voltage vs divided by the load resistance r therefore the magnitude of the current will be little less than the supply voltage vs therefore the waveform of the current in the positive half cycle will be like this during the negative half cycle the diode acts as a open circuit and there is no current flow in the circuit therefore during the negative half cycle the current will be zero in my upcoming video we are going to see about the analysis of the waveform and we are going to find the vr average and vrms values if you are interested in this don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon so that you will be notified each time i upload a video